Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Uh, second lecture natin for uh, Ultimate Stress Design. Wherein we will tackle about uh, sample problems regarding... Sir, mahina na po yung boses. Mahina ba? Wait lang ah. I ano ko lang. Ayusin ko lang ulit. Okay na ba? Mahina po Okay, and okay na ba? Sa akin po sir, wala po ako narinig. Ayaw ko nang po sa iba. Yung iba, narinig ba ako? Or malinaw ba? Dinig po, sir. Dinig. Yun. Okay, so let's start itong mga problems because we have at least four problems na kailangan i-discuss for today. So, uh, makihawakan yung module and then turn it to page 8. So, nasa page 8 yung first problem natin wherein we will tackle analysis and design. So, for as uh, for reference, Sa concrete design, meron tayong dalawang klaseng problems. Meron tayong problem involving analysis and problems involving design. Ngayon, kapag sinabing analysis yung problem, ang hinahanap natin kapag analysis yung problem is either yung ultimate moment or yung mga forces na pupwedeng mag-act uh, doon sa beam natin or mga loadings. So dito sa specific na problem na to ang hinahanap natin is yung safest uniform load na pwedeng ma-experience ng beam natin dito sa uh, given na parameters. So, our first problem is let us determine the safest uniform load that a 6 meter span beam can carry given a beam 300 millimeters wide and 600 millimeters deep with concrete cover of 50 millimeters from the center of reinforcement. So, under this following problem, we have parameters that we need to determine the load using a compressive strength of 27.6 megapascals, yield strength of 276 megapascals, and 325 millimeters na reinforcement bars. Ngayon. So kapag mag-start tayo ng ganitong problem, let us first uh, see kung ano ba yung mga given. So, necessary na alam natin na yung given is meron tayong compressive strength ng concrete na 27.6 megapascals, yield strength na equal to 276 megapascals, and then meron daw tayo na tatlong 25 millimeter diameter na bars as reinforcement. Meaning to say, yung AS natin is equal to tatlong 25 mm. So dito pa lang siguro pwede na natin isolve yan. Meron tayong tatlong 25 mm daw. So 3 times pi over 4 times 25 squared. Yung AS natin dito is equal to ilan? So, sino may hawak na calculator na pwede magsabi sa akin kung ano yung total area? Please, makilabas yung mga calculators nyo kapag nag-discuss tayo para kahit kung paano comprehensive or dynamic yung discussion natin. So, meron tayong 3 times pi over 4 times 25 squared. Meron tayong 
1472.622 square millimeters. So, bukod dito sa AS, pero pa tayong uh, given na concrete cover down na 50 mm. Titignan muna natin kung importante ba yung concrete cover. Pero tayong base na 300 and nominal depth na 600 mm. Okay. So dito sa problem natin, ang first na approach natin is we need to find yung parameters kung singly reinforced ba yung beam natin or uh, yielding ba yung bakal natin. So, either of the two na po pwedeng mauna, okay lang naman din. So, pwede siguro nating tingnan muna kung yielding ba yung reinforcement natin or hindi. Ngayon, para makita natin kung yielding or hindi yung forces natin, paano ba tayo kumukuha ng FS? So, sa case natin ulit, kung meron tayong uh, Hinahanap na reinforcement in order to yield. So, determine if reinforcement is yield. To find yung pag-yield ng reinforcement, we need to prove that FS or the tensile strength of the reinforcement is greater than the yield strength. So mamaya pa natin titingnan kung talagang uh, in transition or tension controlled yung reinforcement natin pero kailangan mauna na greater yung FS doon sa FY. So to find this, we need to determine yung kung ano yung value ng Fs. So paano ba natin hahanapin yung value ng Fs? So pwede natin hanapin yung value ng Fs using yung strain diagram natin. So doon sa strain diagram natin, alam natin na meron tayong neutral axis wherein sa neutral axis, zero yung net tensile strain or net compressive strain. So walang strain dyan or walang stress dito. At the same time, alam natin na kung strain ang pag-uusapan, ang net tensile strain daw ng concrete is equal to 0.003. same time, alam natin na yung net tensile strain ng bakal is equal to no. By reviewing yung mga generalized natin last time, meron tayong equal to FY all over 200,000. Pero since ang hinahanap natin is yung FS, kailangan natin tingnan ngayon na yung FS na hinahanap natin is anyway, yung hinahanap natin is yung FS so, Fs ang i-replace natin instead na Fy doon sa net tensile strain. Okay. Another thing is, alam natin na in terms of distance, ang distance between neutral axis hanggang doon sa compressive fiber natin is equal to the actual depth of compressive block, which is equal to the small letter C. Tapos, mula dito sa compressive fiber natin hanggang dito sa tensile fiber natin, this denotes yung effective depth natin na D. Where in yung effective depth natin ulit ay mula dito sa compressive uh, fiber natin hanggang doon sa center of reinforcement. So, paano natin kukuhanin yung value ng effective depth? Ano yung mga po pwede natin gamitin dito sa given para makuha natin yung effective depth? Take note na yung nominal depth is 600 meters deep. 
And meron tayong provision na meron tayong conflict cover of 50 mm from the center of reinforcement. What does this entail? Ano yung dapat nating i-consider sa effective depth? Let's say na ba natin yung onte? Yeah. So suppose yung concrete beam natin is this one. Tapos 6 meters down na simply supported beam. So kung simply supported beam, ina-assume natin na ang maximum moment sa simply supported beam ay positive. Kung positive yung moment, meaning to say, negative yung bending. Kung negative ang bending, kailangan nasa baba yung tensile part natin. So, given itong sketch na to, na meron tayong concrete beam, tapos subject pa rin siya to stresses, na nandoon daw sa center of reinforcement hanggang dito sa compressive fiber yung tinatawag nating effective depth. Paano ngayon natin kukunin yung effective depth na to? Meron tayong base na 300 mm. Meron tayong nominal depth na 600. Yung nominal depth natin ay yung depth ng buong beam. Paano natin kukuhanin yung effective depth? Subtract yung nominal depth sa concrete cover. Okay, so tama si Mr. De Leon na kailangan nating i-less ngayon yung concrete cover. Since yung concrete cover daw natin is provided na it is 50 mm from the center of reinforcement. So meaning to say, effective depth natin is 600 minus 50. So meron tayong 550 millimeters na effective depth. Next. So in order for us to find the value of Fs, kailangan na natin ulit mag-relate ng similar triangles. So in relation to similar triangles, Meron tayong binabang value na 0 0.003. Same time, meron tayong FS all over 200,000 na katabi. So meron tayong dalawang figures na kinoconsider para dito sa ratio and proportion. Which means that 0 0.003 all over C is equal to FS all over 200,000. plus 0 0.003 all over D. Ngayon, para ma-prove to, i-ano ulit natin sa 0 0.003D is equal to quantity of Fs all over 200,000 plus 0 0.003 multiplied by C. Now, para ma-alis natin yung 200,000, we need to multiply everything by 200,000. Meaning to say, meron tayong 600B is equal to Fs multiplied by C plus 600C. Ngayon, kung, i, kung titignan natin, meron tayong ma-acquire ma na value for Fs. So, pwede natin sabihin na the value of Fs is equal to 600 multiplied by D minus C all over C. Yan ngayon yung pwede natin i-incorporate para makuha natin yung value ng Fs. Now, wala pa tayong value ng C or yung 
actual depth ng compressive block natin. So, paano natin siya makukuha? So, to find C, ano yung dapat natin gawin? Kailangan natin makaisip ng way kung paano natin ma-manipulate yung uh, mga values na involved para makuha natin yung value ng C. To find that, ang kailangan natin gawin is i-relate natin ngayon doon sa forces na nasa loob ng concrete beam. So doon sa concrete beam natin, meron tayong forces in, com in compression and in tension. So yung force in compression natin na capital letter C is equal to 0 0.85 F prime C AB. Whereas yung tensile force natin daw is equal to AS FY. Ngayon, given na yung distance na A is yung fictitious depth ng compressive block natin, alam natin na yung value ng A is equal to beta 1 multiplied by C. So this way, pwede natin makuha ngayon yung value ng C. Diba? Kung kukunin natin yung value ng C in this particular uh, standpoint, pwede natin gawin na hanapin yung beta 1. Ano ngayon yung magiging basis natin for the value of beta 1? According sa structural code, ang beta 1 ngayon ay makukuha natin as 0 0.85 kapag ang F prime C daw natin ay less than or equal to 28 mega pascal. Tapos, meron tayo equation na 0 0.85 minus 0 0.05 multiplied by F prime C minus 28 all over 7 kapag ang F prime C natin ay greater than 28 pero less than 55. Ano dyan ngayon yung pwede natin gamitin as basis for the, val the value of beta 1? Ano yung value ng F prime C natin? Yung value ng F prime C natin is equal to 0 0.85 yung beta 1. Bakit 0 0.85 yung beta 1? 0 0.85 yung beta 1 natin because yung F prime C natin is less than 28 mega pascal. So meron na tayong assumed value for beta 1. Ngayon, hahanapin natin yung value ng C. Saan natin pwedeng hanapin yung value ng C? Pwede natin hanapin yung value ng C after finding A if meron tayong makukuhang relationship between compression na meron dependent do sa value ng A and yung tension. Yung tension natin, ideally, meron na tayong value ng area of steel sa yield strength of steel. So, pwede natin sabihin na through this particular stress block, pwede natin sabihin na compression is equal to tension. Ngayon, if compression is equal to tension, pwede natin sabihin ngayon na 0 0.85 F prime C AB is equal to AS FY. Now, kung meron tayong ganito classing relationship, pwede na natin hanapin yung value ng A. Meron tayong 0 0.85 multiplied by F prime C natin na 27.6 multiplied by A which is equal to 0 0.85 C, since beta 1 is equal to 0.85, 
multiplied by the base na ang base daw natin ay 300 milliliters. Is equal to ASFY. Ang AS daw natin is 1,472. 0.622 multiplied by FY na equal to 276. So, simplifying this, since hindi tayo pwede mag-shift solve, kailangan natin isimplify lahat ng terms na yan. So, 0 0.85 times 27.6 times 0 0.85 times 300, meron tayo 5982.3. So, 5982.3. C is equal to 1472.622 times 276. Pero 406.43.672. Therefore, yung value ng C is equal to ilan? Assumed value of C is now equal to land. Meron tayong 67.941 millimeters. Four. Ngayon, after acquiring the value of C, we can now actually find the value of FS. So to find the value of FS, Ganun na natin incorporate ngayon yung formula. So, Fs is equal to 600 multiplied by the effective depth na 550 minus C na 67.941 all over 67.941. Value of Fs is now equal to ilan? Fs is equal to 4257.155. This is in mega pascal. Ano yung po pwede natin sabihin doon sa Fs? San ulit natin siya kinocompare? Yung Fs and Fy. If Fs daw is greater than Fy, pwede natin sabihin na the reinforcement is yielding. So there will be no change doon sa yield strength ng steel natin since nag yield ngayon siya. Not unless lesser yung yield, yung uh, Tensile strength doon sa yield strength, saka pa lang tayo magre-revise ng strength ng reinforcement. Pero since yielding yung reinforcement natin, hindi natin siya kailangang palitan. Okay, so after checking kung yielding yung bakal natin, kailangan nating i-justify ngayon kung singly. Hi. So, paano natin madadetermine kung singly reinforced yung beam natin? Malalaman natin kung singly reinforced yung beam natin depende sa reinforcement ratio. So, to find yung reinforcement ratio or to justify singly reinforced condition, kailangan natin i-consider na yung actual reinforcement ratio should be less than or equal to the maximum. Same time na kung analysis yung problem natin, hindi natin kailangang i-check yung actual sa minimum. Okay? So kapag analysis ang problem, yung actual, i-relate -re lang natin sa maximum in order for us to find 
kung singly or doubly. Kasi kapag design problem, importante yung principle na yung minimum should be less than or equal to the actual. So sa case natin, para ma-determine kung singly reinforced yan, kailangan lang natin hanapin na yung actual ay less than or equal to maximum. Ngayon, paano natin hahanapin yung value ng actual and maximum? So for the actual reinforcement, pwede nating uh, i-relate yung actual reinforcement na equal daw siya sa area of steel reinforcement all over the quantity of the base multiplied by the effective depth. Alam natin yung information na yung AS natin is equal to 1472.622. All over yung base natin na 300 mm multiplied by the effective depth of 550. Pro actual is equal to ilan? Meron tayong 0 point. Meron tayong 0.009. Okay. So yung actual reinforcement ratio daw natin is equal to 0.009. Na kailangan natin i-relate dito sa maximum. Ngayon, paano natin naman hahanapin yung raw maximum? Meron tayong dalawang conditions na dapat tingnan. Kailangan natin tingnan if in transition ba siya or tension control. Paano natin malalaman yung dalawang uh, reinforcement condition na to? Ano yung dapat natin tingnan? Malalaman natin na in transition or tension control, yung reinforcement natin depende sa ano? Depende sa value ng F S. Ano yung kailangan nating tingnan sa value ng F S? Kapag in transition, yung reinforcement natin, yung raw maximum, ay sorry, rather, yung FS natin ay dapat, ano, alam natin lahat yan ay greater than FY. Pero may condition dyan. di ba? Kapag in transition, yung reinforcement natin, kailangan hindi tataas ng 1,000 yung value ng FS natin. Pero kung tension controlled ngayon, yung raw maximum, yung reinforcement condition natin, kailangan daw yung FS natin ay greater sa 1,000 and at the same time, yung FS natin is greater than FY. Ngayon, Sa case natin, since yung FS is greater than FY, since nag-yield yung reinforcement natin, satisfied ngayon yung condition na FS is greater than FY. Ano na lang yung hindi pa natin nakikita dito?
ang hindi na lang natin napoprove is kung greater ba or less than 1,000 yung FS natin. So ang FS natin is 4,257.155. Greater siya sa 1,000. Therefore, anong reinforcement condition meron tayo? Ang reinforcement condition natin this time is reinforcement condition is in transition or tension control? Tension control po sir. Okay, so tension control yung reinforcement condition natin. Ngayon, kapag tension control yan, marami tayong po pwedeng mahanap doon sa tension control. So under tension control condition, pwede nating sabihin dito na yung strength reduction factor is equal to 0.90. Pwede rin nating sabihin na yung maximum amount of reinforcement ratio is equal to 3 over 8 multiplied by quantity of 0.85 F prime C beta 1 all over F1. So dito, makakahanap na tayo ng limit ng maximum reinforcement. So yung maximum reinforcement natin is equal to 3 over 8 multiplied by 0.85. Yung F prime C natin is 27.6. Beta 1 is equal to 0.85 all over Fy na equal to 276. Maximum amount of reinforcement ratio is equal to ilan? Meron tayong 0.0271. Ngayon, sa case natin na meron tayong 0.0271 na raw maximum, and may raw actual tayo na 0.009, ano na ngayon yung po pwede nating declare? Pwede nating sabihin ngayon na yung raw maximum ay greater doon sa raw actual. ba? Diba? Or pwede natin ulit sabihin na yung raw actual is less than the maximum. Therefore, kung yung actual natin ay less than the maximum, pwede natin sabihin na yung reinforcement natin is singly. Ngayon, na-prove na natin na singly yung beam natin, na iisa lang talaga dapat yung layer na may reinforcement and yielding yung bakal natin. So, meaning to say, mag-fail yung bakal natin in time na appropriate doon sa cross-section natin. Ngayon, Kapag nalaman natin yung dalawang parameters na yun, po pwede na natin hanapin yung ultimate moment capacity. So to find ultimate moment capacity, and yung uniformly distributed load na po pwede natin ilagay doon sa bin natin. So Una na po pwede nating hanapin is yung ultimate moment capacity. Wherein yung ultimate moment capacity is equal to the strength reduction factor multiplied by the nominal moment. So paano natin ma-derive 'yan? Para ma-derive ulit natin 'yan, kailangan natin yung stress blocks natin 
we're in. Tinaset up natin, na meron tayong compressive and tensile forces. acting as a couple force. Tapos yung corresponding distance between compression and tension is equal to the value of Z or equal to D minus A over 2. Since alam mo ulit natin na 0 0.85 F prime C, AB and AS, FY, yung compressive and tensile forces natin. Ngayon, yung nominal moment is the degenerate ng compression and tension na nagpo-form ng couple forces natin. So meaning to say, the nominal moment is equal to either the compressive force or yung tensile force natin multiplied by Z. Or equal to C or yung T multiplied by D minus A over 2. Sa case natin, pwede na natin hanapin agad kung ano yung value ng ultimate moment. Since present na yung steel area natin and yung yield strength ng steel. So, to find that, pwede na natin sabihin na yung ultimate moment is equal to uh, P M N or yung value ng phi natin kanina since tension control meron tayong 0 0.9 multiplied by either compression or tension. Pero mas maganda na hanapin na natin using yung tension natin since mas madali siyang i-consider. So meron tayong phi multiplied by ASFY multiplied by D minus A over 2. So, pwede natin sabihin na meron tayong 0 0.9 multiplied by AS na 1,400 1,470 tama ba? Ayun, 1,472.622 multiplied by FY na 276 and yung effective depth or yung moment arm natin na Z na 550 minus A over 2. Yung value ng A natin ay hindi pa natin pala na ano kanina, na simplify. So, yung value ng A is equal to beta 1 multiplied by C. Is equal to 0 0.85 multiplied by ang value ng C natin ay equal to 67.941 value ng A na dapat natin i-consider is equal to 67.941 meron tayong 57.750 so meron tayong 57.75 So, balik tayo doon sa equation natin. Yung A natin na 57.75 all over. Therefore, ultimate moment natin is equal to ilan? Ultimate moment is 0 0.9 times 1472.622 times 276 times the quantity of 550 minus 57.75 divided by 2. So ultimate moment pattern is 190627.622. Point seven newton millimeters or equal to 
6.27 kilonewton meter. Yan ngayon yung ultimate moment natin. Na kailangan natin gamitin para doon sa uniformly distributed load. So, to find yung uniformly distributed load, kailangan natin kunin yung shear and moment diagram nung beam natin para makuha natin kung ano ba yung equation na dapat natin gamitin para sa pagkuha ng UDL. So, given yung beam natin na may uniformly distributed flow na load, so yan yung UDL na kinukuha natin. Na may simple support or simple span na 6 meters. So, by this, Kahit pa paano, may idea tayo kung paano natin hahanapin yung uh, yung forces na involved. So let's say this is RA, this is RB. So alam natin na pwede natin makuha yung RA and RB sa mas madaling bagay. Pero syempre, since this is academic, we need to determine or we need to show kung paano bang gawin. Ngayon, let's say summation moment at B is equal to zero. Meron tayong uh, equal to RA multiplied by 6 minus yung UDL natin multiplied by 6 multiplied by 6 over 6. Ngayon, we can tell that the value of RA is equal to 6 over 2 UDL or 3 UDL. Ngayon, same time, meron tayong summation forces vertical is equal to 0. Meron tayong uh, RA na 3 UDL plus RB minus 6 UDL. Therefore, reaction at B is also equal to 3 UDL. Ngayon, since meron na tayong value na nakuha para doon sa RA and RP, pwede na natin gawin yung shear and moment diagram. Sa shear and moment diagram natin, sa first point natin from zero, meron tayong existing shear na equal to RA. So meron tayong pataas na 3 UDL and then pababa natin meron tayong 6 UDL na nag-aabang pero uniformly distributed load siya therefore kailangan natin siyang pababae mm -hmm. so meron tayong negative 3 UDL at point B Pero since meron tayong RB na paakyat na equal to 3 UDL din, therefore magsasara ngayon yung shear diagram natin into 0. Ngayon, to find the moment diagram, meron ba tayong existing moment sa simply supported beam? Or simply simple span or simple support? Wala. So therefore, magsistart agad tayo dapat sa 0. So from 0, pwede natin ngayon sabihin na pwede natin kuhanin yung area ng shear diagram para makuha yung actual moment dito sa midpoint or sa midspan. Kung mapapansin nyo, kung nasaan ng zero shear along the span, nandoon din yung maximum moment kapag simple support. Ngayon, since pwede natin hanapin yung value ng Nmax dito, Yung Mmax can be equal to the area of this particular uh, shape. Pero tayong 3 UDL. So pwede natin sabihin na uh, Mmax is equal to 1 half ng 3 UDL 
multiplied by 3 meters. M max therefore is equal to 4.5 UD. Na ang unit natin dito is kilonewton meters. Okay? So, another thing, since parehas naman din sila ng area, alam natin na magsi-zero ngayon yung moment diagram natin. Ang dahil hindi pa nag-meet. Magsi-zero ngayon yung moment diagram natin. Now, kung meron tayong equation na m max, pwede rin nating sabihin na yung m max natin can also be equal to the ultimate moment na po pwedeng ma-experience ng conflict beam. Ang mu daw natin is 190.627. So, incorporate lang natin yung 190.627 doon sa 4.5. UDL. Therefore, final answer for problem number one na UDL ay equal to ilan? Meron tayong 42.362 kilonewton per meter na Uniformly distributed load pwede may experience ng beam. Questions with regards to problem number one. Before tayo mag-proceed dito sa second problem. Wala? Sure kayo? Okay. So it seems na wala pang tanong yung mga tao because madali pa tong problem na to. So let's proceed dito sa medyo complex. Okay. So sa next problem natin, given na meron tayo multiple layers ng reinforcement na present dito sa beam system natin, so ang kailangan daw natin hanapin ay yung moment capacity. So for this particular problem, ang end goal natin is to find MU. Now, paano natin hahanapin yung value ng MU? So first, ang kailangan natin gawing checklist ulit before tayo mag-proceed dito, kailangan natin malaman kung yielding yung bakal or kailangan din natin mahanap kung singly or doubly. Diba? So yan ang target natin para mahanap natin yung end goal. Now, to find this following uh, problems, ano ba yung dapat muna natin gawin? So, first natin na po pwedeng gawin dito is malaman natin na yielding yung reinforcement natin. So, alisin muna natin yung singly or double. So, para mahanap natin kung yielding yung bakal, ano ba ulit yung dapat natin i-consider? Dapat nating i-consider na kapag steel is yielding, dapat lahat ng tensile strength natin should be less, or sorry, greater than Fy or the yield strength of steel. So to do this, kailangan natin i-relate lahat ng reinforcement natin and yung compression. Let's say this is neutral axis. So, sa case natin, meron tayong tatlong layer ng reinforcement wherein pwede natin i-denote na 
this is these are layers one two and three so yun pinaka ilalim natin yung one and then three yung pinaka ibabaw sa case natin since tatlo yung reinforcement natin meaning to say tatlo rin yung nag-aact na tensile forces meron tayong t1 t2 and t3 along with a single compressive force na nag-aact doon sa compressive block natin aside from that kung kung kailangan nating makuha yung pag-yield ng steel Kailangan natin mahanap ngayon yung value ng Fs. Para mahanap yung value ng Fs, kailangan natin ng tatlong net tensile strain. Makikita natin dito sa strain diagram. Taking note ulit na 0.003 ang net tensile strain ng concrete. Tapos meron tayong epsilon sub 3 epsilon sub 2, and epsilon sub 1. All of which I equal to Fy all over 200,000. Or pwede rin natin sabihin Fy or Fs. So pareha sila na over 200,000 because alam natin na pareha-pareha silang steel. Diba? Ngayon, given na meron tayong idea na ganyan na yung gagawin natin, kailangan na natin hanapin yung assumed condition. So let us assume na all steel will yield. Therefore, yung FS natin lahat or yung FS1, FS2, and FS3 is greater than Fy. So yan ngayon yung first condition natin. To find that first condition, kailangan natin hanapin or i-denote na yung Fs is equal to 600 multiplied by D minus C all over C. Ibig sabihin, ang target nating hanapin dito ay yung value ng actual compressive block na equal to C. So itong small c na to, na actual compressive block, yung hinahanap natin. Ngayon, same lang ba yung value ng D para sa lahat ng reinforcement na meron tayo ngayon? Same lang ba or uniform ba yung magiging effective depth or hindi? Considering na meron tayong tatlong layers ng reinforcement. Yung effective depth ba for 3 ay equal kay 2 or equal kay 1? Anyone who can answer? Bakit hindi equal? Ano yung definition natin sa value ng D or value ng effective depth? Ang value ng effective depth daw ay distance mula sa compressive fiber natin, so sa dulo ng compression, hanggang sa center of reinforcement. So meaning to say, meron tayong different rates ng effective depth for the first layer, which is equal to D, okay? Same time, meron din tayong different value for the second layer. And lastly, doon sa endmost layer natin, meron tayong different value for D. Ngayon, considering na meron tayong iba't ibang values for Fs, pwede na ngayon natin sabihin na ito ay mag-iiba. the same time, mag-iiba rin yung value ng Fs for different layers. So, 
ang target muna natin is mahanap natin yung value ng C. So, to find the value of C, ano yung dapat natin gawin? Pwede natin ulit i-assume yung principle of equilibrium between compression and tension. Pwede natin sabihin na C is equal to T. Therefore, 0.85 F prime C AB is equal to summation of AS FY. Since alam natin na so from zero to Ay, from uh, layer 1 to layer 3, yung gagawin natin na summation. Kasi alam natin na magkakaibang layers yan. So, considering na hindi pa natin alam yung value ng C, meron tayong 0.85 multiplied by ano yung F prime C natin sa given na problem. F prime C is equal to 21. Multiplied by A. And yung base natin na hindi ko pala na ilagay. Ang base natin is 350 millimeters. Yeah. So, 0 0.21, ay, sorry, 0 0.85 times 21 times 8 times base natin na 350 is equal to the summation of ASFY. So, Sa case natin is, since tatlong layer sila na greater daw sa FY, we can assume na yung FY natin is uniform dito sa reinforcing set natin. Meaning to say, meron tayong uh, tatlong set ng 4 times pi over 4 times 25 squared. Multiplied by, so AS pa lang yan, yung FY natin is equal to 345. Ngayon, pwede natin simplify. So 0 0.85 times 21 times 350, meron tayong 6247.5. So 6247.5 A is equal to so simplify natin yung kabilang side meron tayong 3 times meron tayong 203 2217 0.748. We're in. Value of A now is equal to divided by 6, 247.325.285. Therefore, yung C natin is equal to A all over beta 1. So to find beta 1 ulit, alam natin na yung beta 1 is equal to 0 0.85 since yung F prime C natin na 21 is less than 28. Therefore, yung C is equal to 325 by 285 all over 0 0.85. Value of C is equal to 382.688 millimeters. Ngayon, uh, considering itong value ng C, pwede na nating mahanap yung mga individual na Fs. Ngayon, para mahanap yung individual na Fs, kailangan nating hanapin yung value ng effective depth na dapat natin i-consider. So, 
In terms of the effective depth, meron tayong D1, D2, and D3. Okay. Balik tayo doon sa image. Ano ngayon yung magiging value ng D1? Given na mula doon sa 810, magbabawas tayo ng 50. So D1 natin, we can assume na this is 810 minus 50. Yung D2 natin is 810 minus 50 minus 150. Tapos yung D3 natin is equal to 810 minus 50 minus 150 and another 150. So sa case natin ngayon, yung D1 is 810 minus 50 or equal to 760 millimeters. Tapos yung D2 is 810 minus 50 minus 150 or equal to around 610 millimeters. And lastly, ang D3 is 810 minus 50, minus 150, and another 150, which constitutes that this is equal to 460 millimeters. So, considering na meron na tayong value ng C and meron na tayong value ng D, pwede na natin kuhanin yung value ng Fs. So, Fs1 is equal to 600, multiplied by the quantity of 760 minus value of C na 382.688 all over 382.688 as well as FS2 is equal to 600 minus 610 or multiplied by quantity of 610 Minus 382.688 all over 382.688. FS3 lastly is equal to 600 multiplied by the quantity of 460 minus 382.688 all over. 382.688. FS1 is equal to ilan? So 600 multiplied by 760 minus 382.688 all over 382.688. FS1 is equal to wait down hindi natin 586 maki check Mr. Raimundo yung 586 mukhang may mali ka ng pindok Ayan. So, FS1 natin is equal to 500. 591.571. Ano yung po pwede nating sabihin dito sa 591.571? Yung 591 natin na FS1 is greater than FY natin na 345. Therefore, Pwede nating sabihin na this is yielding. Next, yung FS2 natin, we can denote that FS2 is equal to, let's say, 610 na lang yun. Meron tayong 356. 0.393.
FS2 is still greater than FY since ang FY natin, okay, kaya muna natin na yung FY is equal to 345 megapascals. FS2 is greater than FY, therefore, yielding pa rin yung reinforcement natin. Lastly, FS3 is equal to meron tayong 120 1.214. Ngayon, yung 121.214 natin is less doon sa 345 na FY. Ang assumption natin earlier is yung FS1, FS2, and FS3 should be greater than FY. Pero dito sa case natin, yung FS3 is less than FY. Pwede nating sabihin na this is not yielding. Okay. Ano ngayon yung magiging impact nito doon sa assumption natin? Yung magiging impact sa assumption natin dito sa particular problem na to is hindi magiging correct yung value ng C. Kasi yung value ng C kanina, kung mapapansin nyo, kinonsider natin na FS1 and FS2 and FS3 is greater than FY. Therefore, yung FS natin dapat is equal to FY dito sa first assumption. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo, Ginawa natin na tatlong ASFY na same na 345 yung value. Pero since nakita natin na hindi nag-yield yung bakal at the third layer, kung ang gagamitin natin ay 345. Kaya isang po pwede natin gawin to satisfy yung problem is to revise assumption. Saan galing yung formula ng yung 600 doon sa formula? Nag-derive tayo kanina doon sa first problem ng value ng FS. Yung 600 ay galing dito sa derivation na may tinitingnan tayo na value ng FS all over 200,000. Nagagets na ako saan galing yung 600. So this is a standard formula na ginagamit natin para mahanap yung value ng FS. Okay? So, break tayo. Ngayon, pagka... Kapag derevise natin yung assumption, kailangan na lang natin sabihin itong condition na to. Kailangan masatisfy natin na yung FS1 and FS2 is greater than FY, pero consider na natin yung katotohanan na yung FS3 is less than FY. Ngayon, para ma-satisfy natin itong, itong condition na to, gagamitin natin sa pagkuha ng compression is equal to tension yung values ng FS1 and FS2 na equal to FY. 
Pero sa case natin, yung FS3 ay hindi na dapat equal sa FY. Ngayon, para gawin to, pwede natin sabihin na 0.85 F'C AB is equal to summation ng AS FY. Or, F'N C A B ulit na equal to uh, meron tayong apat na pi over 4 times 25 squared let's say A S moon So, meron tayong AS1 FY. So, ito ay para doon sa first layer plus yung AS2 multiplied by FY para doon sa second layer since alam natin na yung FS1 and FS2 is equal to FY plus yung AS3 natin this time is multiplied by the value of FS. Since alam natin for a fact na yung sa FS3, hindi siya equal doon sa FY. Nakukuha ba itong, ano na to, itong assumption na to? Okay. So, punta tayo sa problem. Meron tayong 0.85 F'C AB. So, 0.85 multiplied by F'C na 21. And then yung A natin na hindi natin alam. Nire-revise natin yung assumption. Therefore, kapag nire-revise natin yung assumption, hinahanap natin yung bagong value ng C and yung bagong value ng K. Alam ulit natin na yung value ng A is equal to beta 1 C. So therefore, kailangan natin kuhanin yung value ng C. So, 0.85 F'C AB. So, meron tayong 21 times beta 1 C, where in beta 1 is equal to 0 0.85. Multiplied by base na 350. Is equal to since yung AS1 and AS2 ay apat and then meron tayong equal na FY, pwede tayong kumuha na dalawang set. So meron tayong dalawang set ng apat na 25 mm na imumultiply natin sa 345. Next. Ito ngayon ay yung para sa 1 and 2. So yung para sa 3, hahanapin na rin natin. So meron tayong 4 na pi, na pi over 4 times 25 squared multiplied by Fs, which is Unknown. Ngayon, yung FS natin is unknown. In what way natin siya po pwedeng isimplify? Ano ba yung idea natin para mahanap yung FS? Meron tayo ulit sinusunod na formula sa pagkuha ng FS, di ba? So, isimplify muna natin. Meron tayong 0 0.85 times 21 times 0 0.85C times 350. So, meron tayong 5310. 0.375. Ngayon. 
Kung in terms of C natin gagamitin yung value ng Fs, ano yung alam natin na equation for Fs? One standardized equation for Fs is equal to 600. Yung tinanong ni Mr. Sairitan kanina. 600 multiplied by B minus C all over C. Na pwede natin i-incorporate dito sa problem natin. Para, ano, para makita natin na mapapansin nyo na C na lang yung magiging ano. So, simplifying yet yung 1 and 2. Kung isa-simplify natin yung 1 and 2, meron tayong value ngayon na 2 times 5. Multiplied by 345. So, yung para sa 1 and 2 natin, meron tayong 135, 4811, 0.832. Plus, simplifying yung labas natin, so meron tayong... 25 squared pi or 625 pi na equal to 1963.495 multiplied by fs. So yung fs natin ay merong standard value. Okay. Since fs natin ay formula based, so meron tayong 600 multiplied by B minus C all over C. Ngayon, ano yung gagamitin kong value ng D para doon sa third? Yan. Para kita, anong value ng D ang gagamitin ko para doon sa third term natin? Unknown ba yung value ng D or alam na natin nung una pa lang? Four hundred sixty or seven hundred sixty. Okay, so tama yung value ng four hundred sixty as the value for D. Kasi kinoconsider natin na yung 460 is equal to D3. Or yung distance mula doon sa compressive fiber natin hanggang doon sa centroid ng layer 3. Kaya ang gagamitin natin is yung 460 millimeters. Ngayon, simplifying ulit ito, since ayaw, nat since ayaw natin ng may denominator na C, Pwede nating i-distribute lahat yan. So lahat to ay i-multiply natin by C. Meaning to say, magiging quadratic na yon yung equation natin. Meron tayong 5310, 10.375, sorry, 375C squared is equal to 135, 4811.832 C plus so 1863.495 multiplied by 600 multiplied by 460 minus C. So further simplifying yung detail na yan, pwede ngayon natin sabihin ulit na 5310.375 C squared is equal to 
4811.832C. Okay. Baka may magtanong, Sir, bakit ba natin ginagawa tong math na to? Ang haba-haba. Okay. Hindi, ginagawa natin tong math na to na pinipilit natin kasi hindi tayo po pwede mag-shift solve sa board exam. Kaya kung itinatrain natin yung sarili natin to answer something doon sa board exam, kailangan natin itrain na hindi tayo mag-shift solve. Kasi yung mga calculators na, kaila, na po pwedeng gamitin sa board exam as of now is yung mga calculators na hindi pwedeng mag-shift solve. So, kung hindi pwede mag-shift solve, might as well gamitan natin ng mathematics. Total, yung shift solve is pagpubaga, parang yung calculator ang gumagawa ng math para sa atin. So, dito sa perspective natin, kailangan natin gawin mismo yung math. Okay. So, 1354811.832C plus simplifying Meron tayo, 1963.495 times 600 times 400, ay, pwede na, 460. So, meron tayong 5419, 246, 2, minus. Okay. So, dinidistribute lang natin yung 1963.495 times 600. Na 117 8097 C. So, further simplifying, mapapansin nyo na may similar terms. Pwede natin ngayon sabihin na kung i-reduce -re natin yan, meron tayong 1354-811.832 minus 1178-097. So, ang nasa gitna natin ngayon na term is 176-714-097. Kung itatranspose na natin lahat ng to doon sa kabila, meron tayong 5310.375 C squared minus 176714.832 C minus 541-924-2, ay sorry, 620. Okay. Okay. So sa dami ng numbers na to kailangan wala tayong mali. Dahil one miss ano lang, one miss lang dito hindi mo na makukuha yung tamang answer. Bakit? Kapag nakakita tayo ng quadratic equation, ang kailangan nating hanapin to find the value of c is ano? Ano yung dapat natin gamitin para makuha yung value ng C? Kung may quadratic equation, meron tayong quadratic quadratic formula. Okay. So Yung walang kamatayang quadratic formula natin ay dapat nating isa puso. Kasi kubaga, we will never know kung kailan natin siya gagamitin. Pero sa case natin, tignan nyo, since uh, may quadratic equation tayo, kailangan natin yung quadratic formula. Wherein, yung value ng x daw is approximately equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of quantity b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We're in. Meron tayong values ng a, b, and c. Value for a is 5310.375 
value for B is negative 176,714.332. And the value for C is equal to negative 54192.4620. Okay, so X1. This time siguro po pwede ko kayong paggamitan ng calculator. Hindi ko lang sure kung may uh, function yung calculators na luma na quadratic formula. Please verify if meron. Meron po ba? Okay. Okay. So, kung gagamitin yung quadratic formula, yan, meron tayong tatlong values, makakakuha tayo ng value na x1 and x2. So, the first value of x1 is 336. Point four seven one, and the next value na x two is negative three o two point two nine five. Since meron tayong value na negative, na definitely hindi natin magagamit. Therefore, the x one natin can also be equal to the value of c. Nahokuha so. Kung either may positive dyan or may makikita kayong value na sa sobra doon sa effective depth, yung isang value dapat ang i-consider. So sa case natin, may negative tayong value na nakuha. Therefore, yung positive ang dapat natin gamitin. Ngayon, x1 is equal to 336.471. If this is the case na meron na tayong x1 is equal to 336.471, pwede na natin hanapin ngayon yung fs. Diba? So, next is to find fs. 3. In this case, fs3 is equal to... Kung parehas na positive, ano yung kukunin? Okay. So... Kung parehas sa positive yan, let's say doon sa ano natin, yung value ng C na po pwede pinakamalaki is yung value ng effective depth na D. Ngayon, kung parehas sa positive yan, let's say yung D natin, ang value ng D natin is equal to 460, di ba? D3. Let's say yung mga answers natin ay isang 287 point something. X1 natin. Let's say, ah, X1 is equal to 287 point something. X2 is equal to 3,955 point blank. Ano yung kukunin natin dito sa dalawa? given na ang limit natin for the value of C is equal to 460. Ang kukunin natin dito is yung lesser doon sa limit natin. Kumbaga, kapag nagsishift solve tayo, wait lang, is top share ko muna sa glita before ako mag -ano ulit. May papakita lang ako sa calculator na hindi ko lang sure kung magiging helpful pa kasi uh, hindi nga tayo pwede mag uh, ship solve pero uh, pakita ko na lang so kapag nag ship solve ka let's say 54x is equal to hindi na ako marunong mag ship solve 54x is equal to 546 ayan nakikita ba pero naka reverse eh sorry wait lang ha I, ano ko lang. Ibahin ko yung settings ng video. Blessing ko yung pagka-mirror ng video. Yeah. Yeah. 
So dito sa case natin, meron tayong 540, eh, 54x is equal to 546. Ngayon, kapag nag-shift solve ka, shift solve, yan. Meron tayong makikita ang solve for x. Di ba? Diyan sa solve for x, meron tayong nakikita ang value na input. Yung 67.36 na yan. Yan. Ngayon, mag input ka ng limit dyan. Yung limit na po pwede mong i-input dyan is yung, let's say, effective depth or yung limit na gusto mong ilagay in terms of measurement. Kasi from zero hanggang doon sa limit mo, doon siya maghahanap ng value. So yun ngayon, yung core principle ng, uh, yun ngayon yung core principle ng quadratic equation. Yung core principle ng quadratic equation is, or yung quadratic formula is, humahanap ka ng range mula doon sa set of values na binigay mo doon sa problem. Kumbaga, from zero to a specific range, doon siya naghahanap. So, sa case natin, ang pinakamalaking range na dapat lang natin is 460. So, dito... Sa case natin between 287 and 3955, ang dapat nating sagot is 287. Nagagets po ba? Nagagets? Okay. So, erase muna natin before tayo mag-proceed para hindi nakakalito. Oh man. So, yun lang ano, baga parang makikita niyo yung beauty ng mathematics kapag uh, tinignan natin yung uh, pagiging uh, complex ng mga equations na galing mula doon sa simple terms. Iyan na natin. Ito lang. May chat ulit na what if sir yung dalawang lumabas is below 460. Kapag below 460 yung lumabas, yung mas malapit sa limit, hindi. Yung mas malayo ang titignan mo. Pero, imposible na lalabas na positive na within range. Kailangan yun isang either positive or negative or isang positive and then, ay hindi, ganito. It's either positive or negative nila labas, or isang positive na within range and isang positive na outside ng range. Ganon yung labas. Hindi po pwedeng parehas na below doon sa range ang labas sa quadratic formula. Okay, questions pa before tayo magproceed sa value ng FS. Lana? Okay. So, upon determining the value of C since derivation, we need to now determine the value of FS3. FS3 is equal to 600 multiplied by D na 460 minus yung value na bago ng C na P36.471 divided by 336.471. FS3 is now equal to la. Meron tayong 600 times 460 minus 336.471 divided by 336.471. Meron tayong 220.278. That seven nine rather in mega Pascal. Ang FY ulit natin is equal to three hundred forty five. We can now say that the FS three natin is less than FY, therefore not yielding. So to mama the assumption natin do on the FS three. Nayon. Since FS3 pa lang ang natsa-check natin, hindi pa natin nakikita yung values ng FS1 and FS2. 
So for FS1, meron ulit tayo 600 multiplied by sige, isulat ulit natin yung base equation para lang uniform. FS again is equal to 600 multiplied by the effective depth in consideration minus C all over C. So FS1 is equal to 600 multiplied by the effective depth natin for 1 na 760 minus 336.471 all over yung value ng C ulit. Whereas the value of FS2 is equal to 600 multiplied by Ano ulit yung depth natin? 610. Meron tayong 610 minus 336.471 all over 336.471. So, for FS1, ang answer natin is 755.243. And yung value for FS2 is equal to 487.761. So, sa case natin ngayon, meron tayo, kinoconsider na yung FS1 natin is greater than FY. And yung FS2 natin is also greater than FY. Therefore, yielding na lahat. Which justifies yung assumption natin earlier na meron tayong FS3 na less than FY. And FS1 and FS2 is greater than FY. So, since tama na yung assumption natin, ano na yung next natin gagawin? Ang next na natin gagawin is yung ultimate moment capacity. So, find ultimate moment. Ngayon, dito sa ultimate moment natin, Kapag hinanap natin, pwede nating i-consider ngayon na yung ultimate moment ulit is equal to the stress reduction factor multiplied by the nominal moment. Sa case natin, since gumamit tayo ng tension na hindi na equal doon sa yield strength, kailangan nating gamitin ngayon yung in terms of the reinforcement. So summation ng fee, a is Fy multiplied by the value of Z plus P A S F S times Z. Since may mga terms tayo na A S F Y and may term tayo na A S F S, so kailangan hiwalay siya. Ngayon, ano yung hindi pa natin nakukuha dito sa problem na to? Ang hindi pa natin nakukuha dito sa particular problem na to is yung value ng strength reduction factor. So, to find the strength, re strength reduction factor, kailangan natin i-consider yung condition kung in transition ba or tension control. So may case tayo na baka mamaya kailangan natin ng compression control. Mayon. To find the strength reduction factor, ano ulit yung dapat natin tingnan? 
dito sa tatlo, paano natin malalaman kung transition, tension, or compression control? Kapag transition ulit, ang strength, ang FS natin should be less than 1,000 but greater than FY. Kapag tension controlled, yung FS natin is greater than 1,000 and given na yung FS is greater than FY. Now, yung compression controlled, yung FS daw natin is less than FY. Ngayon, sa cases natin, given na yung FS1 is equal to approximately 755.243, FS2 is equal to 487.761, and FS3 is equal to 220.274. Ano ngayon yung pupwede nating i-consider dyan? Meron ba tayong tension control dito sa case natin? Meron bang greater than 1,000 dito sa tatlong value ng FS? Wala. So kung walang greater than 1,000, ibig sabihin wala tayong factor dito na tension control. So ibig sabihin either transition or compression control lang yung pwede natin gamitin. Ngayon, yung FS1 and FS2 ay Yung FS1 and FS2 natin dito sa case natin is greater than FY. Diba? Pero less sila doon sa 1,000. Therefore, kung transition yan, yung value ng strength reduction factor natin is equal to 0 0.65 plus the quantity of sini nakakaalala ng formula natin na nakuha natin based on linear interpolation. Meron tayong 0 0.65 multiplied by 0 0.25 multiplied by the quantity of Fs minus Fy all over 1,000 minus F1. Ngayon, kung compression control naman, in this case, meron tayong Fs is less than Fy na Fs3. Ang Strength reduction factor natin is equal to 0 0.65. Ngayon, yung 0.65 would match dito sa third term natin and yung sa transition would match doon sa first and second term. Ngayon, sa transition natin, hala, paubos pa pala yung ano natin, yung canvas. Wait lang. Type natin, let's see one more. Oh. Hmm. Oh, hey. So sa case natin ng transition, kailangan natin kumuha ng dalawa. So in terms of FS1, or let's say layer 1 na lang para hindi nakakalito. 
So for layer one, yung strength reduction natin is equal to 0 0.65 plus 0 0.25 multiplied by yung FS1 natin na equal to 755.243 minus FY natin na 345 all over 1,000 minus 345. So yung first strength reduction factor natin is equal to na 2.65 plus 1 to the of So yung first strength reduction factor natin is equal to 0 0.8 Zero seven. Layer two. The strength reduction factor natin for layer two is equal to zero point sixty five plus zero point twenty five multiplied by the next natin na four hundred eighty seven point seven six one. Minus 345 all over 1,000 minus 345. So layer 2 natin this time, the strength reduction factor is equal to 0.8. Ngayon, itong dalawang to is because alam natin na yung FS is greater than FY but less than 1,000 yung FS natin. Sa layer 3, ano ngayon yung value ng strength reduction factor sa layer 3? Since alam natin yung idea na yung FS3 is less than FY, therefore, yan ay 0 0.65. Ngayon, after solving for the strength reduction factors, pwede na natin ngayon i-incorporate yan doon sa value ng ultimate moment. So, ultimate moment is equal to the strength reduction factor at layer 1 na 0 0.807 multiplied by the area of steel reinforcement na equal to apat na 25 mm multiplied by Fy. Yung FY natin is 345 multiplied by the moment arm. So, sa case natin ulit, i-denote na lang ulit natin na yung D1, D2, and D3. D1 is equal to 760 mm. D2 is equal to 610 mm. And D3 is equal to 460 mm. Yeah. Tapos, kunin natin ulit yung value ng A. A is equal to beta 1C. Para lang uniform tayo doon sa moment. Is equal to 0 0.85 multiplied by Ang A natin is 336.471. New value for A is equal to 
Ngayon. So for the first player, meron tayong effective depth na 760 minus A over 2. Na 286 over 2. This is for layer 1. Plus, sa layer 2 natin, meron tayong 0 0.704 multiplied by apat ulit na 25 multiplied by 345 multiplied by 610 minus 286 all over 2. Yung ngayon yung para sa layer 2. And lastly, yung para doon sa layer 3. Sa layer 3 natin, meron tayong 0 0.65 or 650 multiplied by 4 times pi over 4 times 25 squared multiplied by... Sa layer 3 natin, since yung Fs is less than Fy, we use Fs as the tensile strength of the steel. Yung Fs natin is 220.274. So, 220.274 multiplied by 460 minus 286 all over 2. Yan ngayon yung para sa layer 3. Which justifies yung value natin ng moment na T, A, S, F, Y times D minus A over Nagagets. Kaya ganyan yung system natin. Pero sa case natin na 220.274, this is Fs. Since Fs is less than Fy. Okay? Therefore, yung ultimate moment natin is equal to ilan. Ultimate moment is equal to 649-122-752.2 Newton millimeters. Or ultimate moment is equal to 649.123 kilonewton meter. So, yun ngayon yung answer ng ultimate moment for problem number 2. Questions? Or anything you need to clarify or violent reactions? Sir, bakit ganun? Isang problem lang pero isang oras. Yan. So, isang oras kada problem kasi nagsasalita ako. Pero kung mapapansin niyo, medyo mabilis lang siyang sagutan if malalaman natin ngayon kung paano ba yung gagawin nating approach para sagutan itong specific problem na to. Sir, bakit hindi tayo tumingin kung simply reinforced ba yung beam or, or doubly? Sa cases na multiple layers yung uh, reinforcement natin, we can actually tell na kapag nag-yield yung reinforcement doon sa pinakaibaba mo, pwede mong sabihin na that is singly reinforced. Okay? Or, kung gusto mong tingnan, meron tayong kinoconsider ulit na AS over BB. Tapos, ikoconsider mo na lang siya doon sa raw maximum. So, pwede nyo siyang tingnan na magiging singly siya. Tanong pa. Wala na? Okay. 
Isang example lang po ba mapapakita nyo sa amin now? Dalawang example yan ah. Dalawang examples yung sinolve natin kanina. Ayan o. Dalawang problems yan na sinolve natin kanina. Questions. Wala nang tanong? Okay. So kung wala na kayong tanong, Answer problem number one doon sa activity sheet na makikita nyo doon sa module. So wala na rin kayong tanong. Let's declare this class dismissed.